What is going on, guys? Rudolanel here, come back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, let's get the Windows command line ready, and uh, I want to talk a little about what we've been doing recently and what we're going to be doing now. Because in the last video, we took a look at how we can apply color to our console, or the shell, or the command prompt that we usually work in. And that, that was kind of nice. It made it more of a little home for us. We had this nice, comfortable environment that we were able to work in. Uh, so I want to be able to show you guys how you can expand that and do it uh, some more. Because we were checking out the properties of the shell and the shortcuts that we've been working with. So uh, let's do that a little bit more today. If we right click this uh, the top title bar of the window here, we can go down to properties and we have a whole ton of options that we can manipulate. The first thing we get greeted with is this options pane right here and uh, I guess we can knock these out one by one. If we check out the cursor size, the cursor is of course that blinking little thing that is always in front of you whenever you're typing and by default this is just a small size. We can, of course, change the defaults here, but I kind of prefer to be only modifying the temporary stuff inside the, each specific shortcut, because uh, I feel like modifying the defaults is just a little risky, if you know what I mean. But we can change this to be medium, with like a bigger size for the cursor. That's a little bit bigger, and we can even change it to be large, which is, in all honesty is my favorite, because it reminds me the most of like Linux, or a typical shell in, the, in that environment. So we can change these back to default, though. Uh, I do want to be able to show you guys these. Uh, the command history, uh, the buffer size, the command history is like all the things you can remember if you use your up and arrow keys. D-I-R, um, pause, V-E-R, V-E-R, C-L-S, that sort of thing. If you use your up arrow keys, you can loop back to uh, all these things that you've... Uh, that you've, all the commands that you've already typed in. It's like your command history. Now you can change the number that it actually remembers and it can have um, the multiple things and you can get rid of duplicates and that sort of thing um, and there you go <laughs> now in the font tab you can uh, change a couple of fonts that you use inside the shell but the shell is really special because all the fonts that you use are what we call monospace fonts where each individual um, character actually takes up the same amount of size as any other character like if you have this I character it's the same width and height of this O character if you add this H character it's the same width and height of everything else so you can only use specific fonts inside your terminal because it's like a digital graph it has to be uh, you know the same size for each coordinate and that sort of thing so we have options here as the Lucida font uh, Lucida console, that's personally my favorite. I use uh, a good size for this one to make it look kind of nice, uh, at least a bit more of a smoother font in my opinion, and it will modify the size of the terminal because obviously you have to have, you have to apply for that width and height. Uh, they all have to be the same, you know. Consulus is there again, which looks kind of cool, but you gotta have some, uh, you gotta be generous with that one. You may not have constless, that may not be an option, and you can supply it to be bold or not, but these are kind of exclusive to your system, so you really might want to check things out. But for now, I'm going to stick with the font that I like for Lucida console. And, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can change the size and that sort of thing, and it'll display the window up at the top for you. Now we can move over to the layout tab, where you can see the screen buffer size and how big the thing actually is in, uh, I believe, uh... Okay, because the buffer size, because you've got 300 pixels uh, tall, or at least vertically, that you can scroll through, and that sort of thing. That's why you had 300 for the height and only 80 for the pixels, because it's doing 300 characters and uh, 80 characters wide. So Now, the window size, by default, that's the actual size of it, um, 80 characters wide and 25 characters tall. The default is 80 and, like, 24 for, norm for uh, standard terminals standard shells and that sort of thing, so I would just change it to 80 by 24 and leave it at that. And you can modify the window position or where um, your command prompt will actually start up on your screen um, when you first run it. Now you can supply like the left and the top positions for it, or you can just let the uh, the system or like your window manager decide where it's going to go. Um, I personally prefer letting the system w uh, manager decide where it wants to go because, I don't know, it's a computer. Do it for me. <laughs> and that sort of thing. And the colors we've been looking at just recently. So you guys know what to do here, and uh, you do have some options with these. It's uh, it's kind of nice. <laughs> uh, be sure to mess around with it, though. Make it something real comfortable. Make it what you'd like. I just want to give you a little bit of a run-through of what each of these do, why they're there, and that sort of thing, and give you a little bit more information about terminals and standard shells and all that. So uh, thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.